Hey YouTube and welcome to Donye Music Musicians slash Producers 101. Um, I mentioned on Facebook that I was going to start uh, putting up videos of just little tips and tricks and little things I do uh, as a musician just to share. Um, as you can see, I am using a PC. Um, you can use a PC or Mac. It doesn't really matter. It's all about preference and all about what works for you. Understand this. In music, there are no rules. There are no rules at all. Everything that I'm going to show you right now is just stuff that I do. You don't have to do what I do. You can do something different. You can take what I do and, and flip it. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. Other thing. Use your ears. Don't use your eyes. Hear what I'm doing and apply those um, ideas to what you do. But don't see, don't look at what I'm doing and try to copy it because what I'm getting ready to show you it might not work on your song at all. It might not work on your um, arrangement of your creation. So you have to use your ears. I'm just teaching you the different things that I do to get the kind of result that I get. All right. My um, software or DAW of choice or digital audio workstation of choice is Studio One. I love Studio One. Some of you use Logic and Reason and Cubase and Pro Tools and uh, Fruity Loops and you can use whatever you want. One software is not better than the other. Every software has its drawbacks and has its pros and cons. And Studio One works wonderfully for me. It's very fast. I can create music in minutes. Everything is drag and drop. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a drum track that I programmed specifically for this uh, little tutorial video here. And we're going to mix it down. Um, there's a lot of you ask, you know, how do you get your drums to sound like that? How do you get your drums to sound like that? Well, I'm going to show you the process that I go through to get the response that I get from my drums so that you can apply that to your drums. Let's listen to this drum track. They don't sound that great. They're unmixed. Now, the first rule of mixing some really great sounding drums and having your drums sound really great is to record them really great. If your drums are horribly recorded, chances are you're going to you're going to spend most of your time trying to work miracles to get them to sound the way you want them to sound. So when you mic down a drum kit, make sure your mics are placed perfectly. Do some test runs to make sure that the recording comes out clean. For instance, the snare sounds pretty pangy and, and tangy when I play the whole kit by itself, uh, the whole kit with all the tracks all together. But notice how it sounds when I just play the kick and the top and bottom snare. See, now the, now the drums have a little more character to them. Listen to it in the overheads. So the drums recorded pretty great. I have a uh, reverb track here, a reverb channel. I'm going to map a signal from some of my drum channels to this reverb channel because it adds depth to the drums and character and even, even power. Let's start with this kick drum. All right, so first thing you hear is bleed through coming in on the kick drum. The kick drum's nice and boomy, but what I want to do is I want that kick drum to hit harder. First things first is a gate. All right. I have it gated. I have it all set up. You can use any gate that you want. Here's it without the gate. And I'm going to turn the gate on while it's playing so you can hear the difference. Okay, and I'm going to turn the gate on. All right. Now the next thing to add some attack to that kick drum. I loaded up a transient plugin. If you have a transient plugin, a transient plugin is one of the best plugins to have. But if you don't have a transient plugin, a compressor, it can squeeze the sound so you can beef it up and you can add more attack to that kick drum. Okay. So 
Here's it without the transient. Now I'm going to load it up. It's a lot more sharper. And now I'm going to EQ it without the EQ. With the EQ. Okay. It's a lot more round, but it's still got the attack. It has a little crisp high end on it, so you can, don't lose the definition. Let's listen to the snare. Okay, first things first. Here's it with the gate, or without the gate, rather. Now let's turn the gate on. Perfect. I already kind of preset this, and that's because, as I was showing it in my last video, the system froze and I had to, like, reboot everything up. So I already had everything set up here. Now we want the transient master as well because I want some attack on this. Let's turn that on. Can you hear or feel the difference in that? And I took some of the sustain down so it doesn't ring as much. See? That's with the ring on. I wanted it off a little bit. All right. Now I wanted to squeeze it down, so I thought I'd compress it. You can use any compressor you want. Is it without the compressor? Turn it on. Now, let's EQ this. Without EQ, here we go. Very slight difference, but I added a little low end so I can have body on the snare. Now. Here's a mistake a lot of people make. Wrong, wrong, wrong. That's the first, this is the first mistake to make to get your snare to sound like paper. Okay? That's not what you want to do. Let's move on to the bottom snare. A lot of bleed. Okay, we're going to gate that out. Right here. Perfect. Now, I don't really add a lot of compression to everything because I want the attack of the snare to come from the snare top. But I want the sizzle to come from the snare bottom. So I just gate it and I EQ it like this. Here we go. Can you hear that? Nice little sizzle at the top. This is the channel where you want the high end to kind of stick up a little bit not the other channel now let's listen to the snare top and snare bottom by themselves see how it has a nice attack some body but sizzle now let's send the bottom channel the snare bottom channel to the reverb even better you hear it let's bring it down Bring the kick in. Now we can even do more with this kick. I'm going to add some compression to it. I want the compressor after the transient. Here we go. Let's listen to the snares in the kick drum. We can even send some of this to the reverb. Not a lot. Let's mess with this hi-hat. Hi-hats are tricky because there's a lot of bleed in hi-hat mics. Fortunately, in this one, there's no bleed. Now all I do is throw some EQ on the hat. Just like that. Then I pan it a little bit, depending on your perspective. And send it to the reverb channel. Let's listen to all of these. With your toms, there's going to be bleed in your toms. But the easiest way to get tom bleed out is take out all the audio where there's no tom hit. So we can afford to lose all of this. Now all we'll have is this. All right. Now I'm going to throw a little gate on here just to get rid of that last snare hit right there. 
that's the best we're going to get. Let's do a little compression here. This isn't going to be perfect. It's just to show you what I do. There we go. You hear that? Bring the attack up. Now we're going to EQ. Now I'm going to find that snare EQ, wherever that is, and bring that out. There it is. Now let's send it. All right. All that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the gate over here. The compressor over here. And the EQ. Let's send it to the reverb. There it is. Now let's pan this. Now let's do the third one. Same thing. We're going to copy the effects over. Now let's listen. Nice. Let's send this to the reverb channel. Cool. Now we got one more tom to edit. And that is this fourth tom here. Let's do the same thing. And what I might end up doing is adding some more elements to it because I need that floor tom to really smack. Now I'm going to add a transient because I want it to hit harder than that. Let's see what it sounds like now. There we go. Let's EQ some stuff. Now let's pan that here. Now let's listen to the whole kit with the exception of the overheads. All right. Sounds a lot better than it was sounding before. Now, for those of you who did not know, the character of the snare comes from the overheads. It does not come from the direct mics. And sometimes it can clash with the direct mics and you have to make adjustments. Okay. First thing we want to do, just compress a little bit of it. Not a lot. Okay. Let's EQ it. Let's roll some of the low end off. Let's bring up some high end and send it to the channel. Let's hear the kit. I'm going to bring in the overheads gradually. Whole kit. Final coup de gras of everything that I like to do, and you can choose to do this or not. I bust all my drums to a bus check, and then I'll put a multi band compressor on there just to fatten things up. And you'll hear the difference. Watch this. Hear that? That's how I get my drums to sound clean. Um, I hope this has helped a lot of you. Um, that have asked that question. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to comment below. All right. This is Donye Music and we are out of here. Thanks for sitting through. Subscribe if you if you haven't already. Uh, thanks again.